Hello, and welcome to Subplot of Course. This is not your usual host. This is Charlie for some reason, because unlike Star a normal episode, dead. this is... No, Star Wars is not dead. No, I'm just <laughs> this is the 2019 year-end anniversary episode. Yay! Yay! Hey. Another year of books. And unlike last year, we decided to do this again, where we discuss the year, discuss the books, have some silly topics. But first, let us introduce our hosts as usual. So, you know, once the super virus comes to take over the world, he'll probably let us know how long we have to live. Vincent, say hi. Hello, you're all going <laughs> to die real fast. <laughs> yes. I love and it. Especially because you're not vaccinated, because the anti-vax movement is picking up speed, and I don't like it. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> getting, a, getting a little real here. A little real. <laughs> but also, he may not program the killer robots of the future that will wipe out mankind if the viruses don't, but he will definitely build them. Say hello, John. Hey, I'm responsible for secondary cause of death. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And someone who also teaches high school students, except in a subject that they may actually care about and doesn't just teach them about how the world is too good for them in terms of math. Say hello, Adrian. Hi, that's really sad. I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, our fearless leader, our usual host, you know, the Charlie. one who boldly sends our podcast out to where no one ever has listened before. Say hello, Stavros. <laughs> hello, and it's true. <laughs> yes. We... We're going to get so many listeners now that Charlie's the host, Stavros, you're going to be so sad. Uh, I, I, let me break in and say our viewership is exceedingly low. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Why would work. you reveal that to our viewership? Why would <laughs> you tell? Oh, that brings a question. Is Stavros okay? <laughs> Is Stavros okay? Oh, so, man. to get started, since we are on our brief little hiatus at the end of the year, let's see what everyone is up to with their newly, newly garnered free time for not having to read a book once a month. So, uh, let's start with John. What types of books, movies, discussions are you engaging in now that you don't have to deal with this obligation? Well, now that I don't have to read a one book a month, I've actually been reading three books a month. So I've really gone the opposite direction with this uh, <laughs> reading. The, I'm not weighed down by the responsibility of reading such horrible literature. No, no. What John <laughs> is doing is he's getting prepared because when he has a bigger family soon, he's got no time to read books. So he's that's reading true. all of next year's oh, books right true. now. <laughs> If you guys so give me a reading list, I would do it. I, I can't. I've been I reading uh, in anticipation of Star Wars, uh, uh, the 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 Last Jedi, sure. not the Last Jedi, or the Rise of Skywalker. Um, yes. This is not 2018. This is 2019. Let's get it right. Um, I've been reading the uh, the Aftermath series, so Star Wars Aftermath by Chuck Wendig, and uh, oh, yes. I'm, uh, rounding the corner on the last one. Nice. I, is this why you have flooded my text messages with a group text about whether Lando sucks or not? Yeah, we literally, just so the viewers understand how nerdy this group of friends is, I think we had a, over 100 and, was it over 100 text messages? Yeah. I Easily. went to the library, Easily. I did an you hour badly work and Lando performed my phone, a... <laughs> and there was 120 text messages about this topic. That was more text messages than I think I've gotten in months. And the topic was like that Lando minutes. was a terrible administrator of, of, of Cloud City, and we really needed to discuss this. And we are <laughs> going to no longer discuss this right now, because we have an episode to record, and I Thank think God. I will go insane if this continues. <laughs> but, uh, so, Lando so, suffers? <laughs> Vince, what have you been up to? Um, I just finished uh, Jack Ryan Season 2 on Amazon with my wife. She really likes the Jack Ryan se series, even though she's never read any of Tom Clancy's books, which I actually read all of when I was growing up. Um, I, ha I actually spend a lot of my time reading, um, I think I mentioned this before, but I read uh, Asian uh, um, fiction um, mm -hmm. because I feel like Asian sci-fi fantasy is uh, very de uh, different thematically than Western countries' uh, sci-fi um, fiction, so I find it very inspiring. I still have this like underlying desire to write my own sci-fi fantasy fiction kind of thing, but it always peters out because I brainstorm and I write like like structured novels like in outline form, and then by the time I start writing, I'm like I am terrible at writing dialogue and <laughs> literature and like you know just like you know plot setting and stuff like that. It's something I need, I need practice at basically. So uh, eventually it'll happen. But when you review me uh, in a future episode, don't uh, rip me a new one. I have plenty <laughs> of ones ripped already. 
Is it going to be about how you use your professional knowledge to wipe out mankind with killer virus? Um, and you all die because the anti-vax movement is going pretty strong now. <laughs> Dang it! Wait, hold on. What's what's your mystery? Your mystery virus is going to be like measles or something? No, <laughs> why? Is, that's that? Charlie's. That's Charlie's. Hey, uh... It might as well be given how things are going. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to wipe you all out with the common flu because by, in the future, none of you will use a flu vaccine, <laughs> and everyone will die, like right. the great uh, influence of pandemic. Just so everybody knows, this podcast supports our viewers getting vaccinated. So go get your flu shot. <laughs> Absolutely, please, 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 vaccine. please do it. <laughs> please get vaccines, especially to measles, because my kids can't go. <laughs> go get All right. it. So Stavros, after your wife and I forced you to go see the Downton Abbey movie, what have you been spending <laughs> your time on? <laughs> it's true. I, I I was a little lukewarm on Downton Abbey. I will say, uh, but no, on my, on my free time, um, I'm currently playing Control. Uh, it's a kind of a supernatural uh, actiony video game. Um, and uh, in terms of books, um, Felicia Day released a new like kind of self help book on creativity, which I finished a couple weeks ago, um, and I I briefly considered. Uh, listening to the expanse series uh but then i realized there's roughly a million books in that series so i decided against it uh, so <laughs> not, <laughs> yeah. i think i think it's seven or eight now something like that oh okay so ain't nobody oh, got time for that um so if listeners are interested star wars and i play heroes of the storm in apex every night so yes. if you want to join yeah. us um, you can join <laughs> our uh, spac awful, podcast though. gaming channel and we'll play together. <laughs> sure for sure carry us please though you have to be better than us <laughs> you definitely have to be better than us uh but no but uh in terms of audiobooks now um i am listening to the silmarillion nice yeah. oh uh, nice. who's that narrator is really amazing version of that of that book um, um some british dude i don't know yeah sure. it's a really good version <laughs> i actually have in my possession a long time ago i got a first edition copy of the silmarillion that is the oh, only oh, first nice. edition copy of any book i've ever had and I'm, that probably makes me the happiest because i really like nice. that book Cool. I'm sure some of your books are first editions, just not like big fancy ones. Oh, yeah. Um, like uh, Tarius's books. I have first edition of all of those. <laughs> <laughs> and Adrian, what are you spending your time doing? Let's see, I started and finished Return of the Oberdin, which was good. I have been slowly making my way through the entire catalog of Unsolved Mysteries for an essay I'm trying to write. Um, like 13 years of that series. Wait, Unsolved Mysteries? Like the, the, the TV show? Yep. You're watching all of it? Yeah. How many of the we... murderers have you caught? <laughs> they, well, they've been updating them slowly over the years. So, like, they actually caught quite a few. <laughs> I was going to ask that same thing. question. Yeah, you you got to catch yeah. at least one of them, Major, and bring us some uh, notoriety. Like, what I'm really fascinated by, actually, is, like, how different it is from, like, the true crime stuff that we listen to now. Um, like, it's so so focused on like missing persons and especially like orphans who like somehow get like hoodwinked into being like you know sold to a family or something crazy like that like adoption laws really sucked in the past y'all like i understand why it's hard to adopt people now <laughs> wow <laughs> like, like oh, one, of the early, one of the early episodes was like you know there was some sort of a, a massive you know like drought in one of the middle states and so they just loaded kids up onto a train and like sent that train down like south and just like distributed kids at every stop to anybody oh, who wanted them like oh, this God. is how bad it was it's it's uh. fascinating to me that's crazy. Oh my yeah. gosh. Just because of a drought? In that case, all of California's kids are up for adoption. <laughs> Come by, pick up whatever you want. Wow. That's incredible. That's yeah. cool. I, I hope to hear the uh, the project this is related to. Is it going to be like a, a literary project or is it for your classes? Yeah, or? it's, it's more Adrian's like going to adopt a child. <laughs> <laughs> Using 18th century rules or something. <laughs> All right. Uh, as for myself, besides my never-ending quest to pick up all the tree poop in Breath of the Wild, I have been uh, finally, now that I have time, continue my book readings of the Poldark series, which Starvus makes fun of me for reading all my period British series along with Down Abbey and all this stuff. But once That's I finish why. my current book, which is book four, I think, the Warlegan book, you know, for you nerds who also watch the TV series and realize season five is a bunch of filler crap that isn't in the books... Boo. Then I purchased a copy of the first book of Wheel of Time, so I'm. Oh, I have no idea whether like you are that, in I, big trouble. Of Star Wars yeah, is it's a rabbit hole. Series. You were in yeah, big I trouble. I heard that's a <laughs> bad, bad idea. No, no, no. It's not a bad idea. It is a good series, but like it, 
there are a lot of those goddamn books and they're nice. long as hell which is part of the reason why i enjoyed it so much because they were long and they were good but um i will say this that he released so slowly that he died before he finished the entire yeah. series Brandon so i know it. the whole thing and i had a friend whose wife was super into it and she was like you should read it you should read it but as like the last couple books came out she's like no you no my sister so has I'm just read curious that series she would reread the entire series every time a new book came out because she would always forget Jeez. what happened. Like the entire series. Like That's she was like my like, sister and mm-hmm. Harry Potter, except something far more literary as far as oh, I forget. It was, it was How painful. many actual is this part of the this is part of the it's expanse like 13, series? 14 as well? books? No, it's not. No, it's Wheel of Time's a fantasy series. Yeah. So it's like the two big ones from the Probably. early nineties are the Song the of Fire and Ice, which is <laughs> Game of Thrones and this, right? I don't follow this that much. So mm-hmm. this one's really good. That one's really okay. good. Um Good. Oh, I feel much better about this decision now. Thanks. No, you enjoy it, but never choose it for a, a month of a, a podcast <laughs> because we will hate. We will not be able to finish that for like multiple well, months. years. Also, this is a sci-fi those. series, not a fantasy series. Who knows? I mean, if we don't get any li- viewership, you know, we really might as well change it to like, you know, <laughs> like autobiographies or something. Maybe we can we just do this wow. for our own self-satisfaction, Vincent. Do you hear that, viewers? <laughs> If you don't tune in, we're going to start doing crazy oh, shit on here. We're just going to turn into a Wheel of Time podcast. Yeah, we can probably do like, uh, conspiracy theories. We get way more hits. That's true. This is August 2020, and we're, we're reviewing Barbara Walters' <laughs> life biography. Baba Walters. Baba Walters. I'm Baba Walters. All right. So, for our first official topic, last time we did this back in, I think, January 2018. We had a giant protagonist bracket of epic contests. I don't remember if Star Wars had a real title like that or anything. But we're <laughs> going to do a slightly more informal version of that. And since we missed last year's anniversary episode, I was just going to see, does, does anyone have any nominees for the 2018 champion besides Paul Atreides? Anyone want to argue anything else? Otherwise, we just move on to the next topic. I, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that's a tough think one. About that. Let me think about that. I mean, he can see the future. He's, of course, a hierarch and he's got the sight and he's spice and all that stuff. So I feel like. <laughs> no, feel like no, you know what? I think the guy from the guy from uh, the Martian, what's his name? He was legit like one of the best protagonists. Yes. Well, he knew everything and did everything. All except right. for women. Cause that, no that was the <laughs> other one that I was thinking like might be in the running. So, like, he used the power of his mind to literally, like, science his way off of a dangerous yeah, yeah. situation to get, to get on Mars. Of, uh, to get off of a planet where you're MacGyvering your way off a planet where there's, like, no oxygen or atmosphere around you, that's pretty difficult. Dune yeah. at least had some, like, atmosphere. Like, the dude had, like, food and water and worms to play with. True. Do you have he was time? born into it. Jason Bourne? I guess. Adrian was a hero last <laughs> oh, year. Because it was the same actor. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jason Bourne on Mars. Yes, he wins. Martian wins, Stavros. Sure. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm a little bit more... I, I'm not as into Paul Atreides because... I don't know. I just didn't like him that that much, I should say. So. But you didn't let's, like the new Adib? Uh, no, I mean... They did a real job. Wow, Deep. <laughs> Yeah, that's not a job. <laughs> he birthed, not a job. He the God, wait, did he birth the God Emperor? We haven't read the later books and all that stuff. Anyways, fine. Marshmallow. <laughs> yes. Which is actually very appropriate considering that uh, William Mandela won 2017 despite having people like John Carter and stuff like that in there. Though I was what, what did John Carter would have been like an epic battle? On Mars? <laughs> Who's the best protagonist? On Mars? <laughs> I mean, John Carter definitely does better on Mars than. Uh, than in the he does breathe, actually. His, in his <laughs> world, he can breathe. I'm, I guess I take the advantage. I'm a poke a hole in your suit. Oh, you died. <laughs> actually, no point over. I'm looking at the list. Was was uh, was that book on this year's reading list, or was that the previous year's? This is, is 2018. Somewhere? 2018, oh, not this oh, year's. 2018. Stars. I see. Okay. 2018. Now well, you're all just, changing the rules. <laughs> we're we're just doing a brief little makeup because we I missed see. last year's. Oh uh, yeah, that's bracket. Right. Everyone that's needs right. to know the champion, and within about three minutes, we have decided on the Martian. I didn't even look up the actual names of the actual characters. We don't know so who the Martian was, but <laughs> it was been a while. It was it's, Jason. It's it's it something Matt Damon. It's like is it? It's not Matt, Matt Damon. Damon. <laughs> is it Paul Watney or is it? Uh... Is it Mark Watney? I want to say Mark, oh, Mark Watney. Right. Yeah. No, not Whitney. It's Watney. It's 
Yeah, Matt, it's Matt Damon know. in the movie. All right, that's it's all. Mark one. It has also, been written down. That is does anybody want to change their answer? For the rest of this to Solaris, the the protagonist from Solaris. Anybody want to? Like the crazy things? Russian dude that like beats people at a drop of a hat. No. <laughs> Did he? Wait, what? He just like he just like loses mm-hmm. his shit like very easily. Jodie Foster, Jodie Foster from Contact. She could take Matt Damon in a fight. <laughs> no, that's a fair point. <laughs> that's a fair point. <laughs> Mark I guess we're in agreement. Is. The Martians yeah, protect executive decision. Mark okay, Jason Warney. Jason Warner wins. Okay. Jason so, Warner Mark Warney. Right. Mark Warney. So back to our usual review of the year topic. So back to 2019. We had a lot of really cool worlds to read about this year, right? I bring it up for our readers who can't remember all the podcasts they listen to. Okay, so I can't remember either, so Red Rising, 2001 A Space Odyssey, Fahrenheit 451. The Wandering Earth, A Fire Upon the Deep, Trail of Lightning, Mecha Samurai Empire, The Time Machine, Accelerando, Ad Astra, and Ancillary Justice. So I feel like in terms of like the worlds and themes, we had like a really cool set of books this year. But uh, Styrus, did you have any of them that like in terms of the world you thought was like especially cool or kind of stood out? Um, well, I by world, I assume you mean like the setting, right? Yeah, the setting. Yeah. So you're not this, not a specific planet in terms yeah. of like sci-fi world. I think or, that yeah. I mean the one that stood out to me specifically is a fire on the upon the deep because you. I think this is one of the first ones you've read where you get like this whole like uh, like wide picture of like what's happening on a galactic level, and I thought that was really cool to see instead of like a you know like a char- like a specifically only character driven story. Except so, for maybe uh, Colorado. <laughs> I was going to say, this year compared to previous years, not everyone was on every book, so, you know, not everyone can compare anything. But, Adrian, did you have a, out of the ones you read, did you have something? I think think Far Up on the Deep as well, right? Like, if if anything, you know, that setting and that world was perhaps more interesting even than the characters that were in it. Nice. Yeah. And, I mean, I'm also going to agree with Fire Upon the Deep, but, John, you did not read Fire Upon the Deep. (laughs) So, out of the ones that you ended up here for... (laughs) What was your feelings about, like, coolest setting? Actually, you know, having not read it, I'm still going to choose a fire upon... No, I'm I'm not going to do that. I think you should do that, just for conformity's sake. (laughs) No, I have too much integrity for our fans, for our viewers, to tell them a lie. I have not seen or read that book. I'm sorry. John, just... But my fans, our fans disagree with you, obviously, because the best book... (laughs) in the best setting of 2019 was obviously red rising because everyone hated that episode because we did not portray it in the in the, I mean, in the greatest of lights i think red rising obviously had the best 100 percent of the comments we got this year were about how our opinion of red rising sucked which you know what i'm not going to entirely disagree with so and also john john merely conforms because he doesn't want to get sent back to the ministry of love after the first part of this season so <laughs> no that's terrible it's a valid concern doing it. um, the, the best, the, did, uh, the best setting is uh, of the books that i've read it's probably excel rondo but i have to say you guys i think the book is relatively close to the movie maybe and 2001 a space odyssey is fantastic so mm. i like oh, that yeah. setting the best I will say that I regularly send Texas Stavros with the monkey from 2001: A Space Odyssey. He went smashing the boat. <laughs> it is it is a recurring theme. So I'm gonna get used to me. He bought a new house, uh, and you still sent him that that GIF. It was the same. Oh no, that, always that GIF a, answers. Shit. That GIF is universal. It's like, a, oh, we lost a game. It's the monkey smashing the bones, or uh, oh, you just signed this many documents. Oh, it's the monkey smashing the bones. Like, you know, it works for everything. It's, it's true. Cool. I do. Yeah, it's, I saw it. It's very universal. You know, there's. There's so many, so many applications. The monkey is like the Mona Lisa. The expression on his face could be happy or <laughs> sad. You don't know. You got to analyze. That's true. It is what you want it to be. What What about when Stav gets a big promotion at work? Oh, the monkey. Oh, the monkey for sure. <laughs> He's like, God damn! I ex- I expect a big raise. Look at this. I deserve it. He's <laughs> advancing to the next level of evolution. Exactly. <laughs> next thing you know, he's like on a spaceship with a computer named Hal. <laughs> Nice. As much as I would like to spend the rest of this episode starting to just sing the 2001 theme, let us move on. No, 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 so, no. this year, 
Albertson's delight, mm-hmm. I'm sure. We had plenty of shakeups. We have new hosts. Say hello, Adrian. Oh, that's me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <I'm, laughs> yeah. So there you go. That's all of the participation required of he's, you for that. He's bit. much more <laughs> eloquent but, uh, in person. Like, <laughs> we included movies. We had an actual author on the show. So Stavros, which of these seem to be like the most pleasant delight for you as showrunner and putting all this stuff together? And which one of these is the one that makes you hate us all and wonder what you're doing <laughs> with your life with this podcast, anyways? I mean, that last part is obviously every single episode that we ever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Stavros okay because he's not Ouch. I, I was torn between doing that and saying like well obviously the movie episode because Vincent wasn't there for that one but so deep cuts on I know the most delightful episode. part of the show it can either be a great insult Ooh. or a great compliment because I don't know if he hated or he loved the fact that the movie episode had didn't happen. you'll never know you'll never know it's, it's, it's one so of those it's one of those. <laughs> uh, no, but um, in, in reality, like uh, the the episode where we got um, uh, the author for Mecha Samurai Empire uh, on, that was really awesome. Great, uh, great milestone for the show, being able to do something like that. Um, that and that was really fun to do for all of us that could make that. Um, so really A plus. Uh, it inspired us, actually. Next season, we're hoping to get more authors. So yeah, if, you for know, sure. If you are an author and you listen to us, join us on our show. <laughs> you know, maybe yes. one of those... Well, that's- 12 people but no i was i was gonna say if you hadn't brought it up like that episode was truly a highlight and yeah peter Torres was super cool and like even beyond the episode talked with us a while and you know just about kind of the bear and his books and everything like that and i thought that was really fun and exciting and truly truly an experience wait you didn't know that hg well sub- subscribes to our podcast he, he's totally maybe as a state series yeah. Oh my god, he time <laughs> traveled to now just to listen to our podcast. He, he rode the podcast. He rode the time travel bike to join our podcast. <laughs> I don't That's right. I don't I don't want to belittle this, but uh Peter Tierras was was really great on that podcast, by the way. I listened to that podcast. I didn't participate, but you guys you guys did a great job. Peter did a great job. Uh it was really great. That's and then the that, podcast that, that being John said. Back. That's the reason why he's back now, because he, he can't miss another one. Well, yeah, 95% like, of the authors that you guys book review, we book review are dead, so I don't want to... This doesn't put him in good company, though. Yeah. That's correlation, not causation. Join us on our podcast. We won't kill you, I promise. I mean, it also helps that I think both of his books are like two of the ones I've enjoyed the most over the last three years, so... He's writing a third book, so listeners, next season, we're going to try and get him back on, and we're definitely going to read the third book. It's already we're definitely reading third book. It's coming out in like the next couple of months, right, I think? Is it? It's it's already, no, it's, already it's, already, it's, already, it's, already it's already released in like France and some other places. Oh, like nice. it's no, that's that, that was the second book. Oh uh, no, I, I think he's got like art up in like some some bookstores. Or something yes, like that. yeah, and that's why I said the book's already been proved. But I I think the release date's fairly soon, actually. Well, obviously, you guys will know because we're going to get advanced copies, all of us, I assume, first editions in the mail. Peter's Peter's going to send it to you guys. Oh, wow, really? I actually. I would not. Uh, I would not uh, be uh, ad- against the idea of him signing a book for me. I would actually appreciate that a lot. I mean, I paid <laughs> money for that. <laughs> yeah. After we have done our sad amount of celebrity begging, let's. Uh, <laughs> you know, since we are talking, since I did uh, make Adrian pipe in for no reason. In our previous anniversary episode, we actually did a how did we meet and like how did we get into our profession? But Adrian wasn't there, so now it's time to make him force him to do it. So pretty much the answer hey. to how did we meet was high school. Adrian, do you have anything to add to that? No, no, it was like yeah. it was like preschool, like for how Adrian met Jose and then Jose Oh, it was also one of our episodes. Oh yeah. He was the firefighter in Fire Fortnite Fahrenheit yeah. four fifty one. What was the yeah, first and- class that we all met each other in i'm trying to think about that actually i know i had stavros in spanish freshman year yep. i didn't take spanish but i knew stavros from seventh grade because we went to the same junior high so that could have been the connection because i think we all just sat i think the first official meeting was just we all sat outside of carnegie hall and i think i first met john and a bunch of other people we were all like sitting there and like either just doing homework or talking about video games probably both and then that was it then we were all friends Nice. Video games. It brought Sounds, that easy. Yep. Yeah. Was that easy? Yep. Did you know that Stavros like <laughs> that convinced the, the student council to buy us video game consoles so we could play video Wait. games throughout our years in high school? I 
thought that was just your <laughs> video game console. I don't think that's true. I feel like N64. I think the N64 club, I think you applied, and I was on the student council, and I voted to approve your N64, and we all voted yes. Wow. Yeah. I, First of all, it wasn't an N64 club, right? It was club <laughs> rad. Analog to digital. Analog to digital. Yeah. We applied for an N64, or maybe it was the club application or something. Like that, but I definitely felt like a I think it, was, bit, it must be the club application. I think it was the first time I felt like a corrupt politician because it's like I'm part of the club <laughs> and I'm voting for the club. Oh yeah, we good work, everyone. Like we did it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, think I came on the club after that. I didn't know that. You know, our yeah, friendship was based passed. on like money laundering and oh, yeah. abusing the system. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, more importantly, Adrian. Why, why and how did you end up where you are, you know, dealing with books slash science like all of us in some way? Uh, let's see. So I went to college with double major in English and philosophy, uh, came back and got the job I really wanted, which was to work at um, a homeless agency. Do you guys remember EHC Life Builders from back yes. in high school? Yeah, yeah. Yes, um, I, I got a job there for a while. I was a volunteer coordinator for a little bit. Then I was contracts and grants, and I was being groomed to be their database manager, um, which was like the safest job. It was started at like six figures. It was kind of a, a really amazing thing. Um, but the thing that kind of bugged me was that the the guy who had the job currently, who was trying to groom me for his job, like he looked like so longingly back at like a humanities education. Like he would constantly take you know Stanford extension classes and things like that, and he seems to like kind of regretted his life trajectory to a certain extent to like you know find his niche and kind of like camp on it for so much of his life um and i just got kind of concerned about just like the ways in which we were you know thinking as a people because you know it was just about the time that hurricane katrina happened and um all the money that was going to homeless aid dried up because everyone was sending money over there um and i just felt as if there was something wrong with our sort of critical thinking skills to allow you know homelessness to happen in this really really rich place so despite being you know fairly introverted i went back to school to learn how to teach and i went to get my master's in buffalo and then a phd over in berkeley um and went here uh, to teach high school actually now because um teaching college is kind of easy actually it's not very challenging it's largely just you kind of demonstrating your brilliance to a bunch of people um and i was feeling a little disconnected from my students i guess and i kind of wanted to get a better sense of how they were thinking and feeling now that i was getting older um and it's been a really good move honestly like it's been really fun to sort of get a sense of like what makes teenagers tick and i feel like i've learned more about teaching in the last like two months than i have in the last i don't know four years or something like that nice mm -hmm. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. You're a brave man, Adrian, teaching high school populations. That, that is a challenging population to motivate. In college I mean, and in grad school, they're all self-motivated, and they're paying tons oh, of money. Right. But in high school, oh, man, those kids are just like, especially towards the senior years. Uh, you, you to be fair, it's a very exclusive high school where tuition is more than most colleges. So it, there is some motivation for them to do better. But, yeah, it's, it's an interesting shift. <laughs> Excellent. So, now that we know more about you, let us move on to our next topic. So, the thing everyone has obviously been waiting for ever since our 2017 protagonist battle. Let us move on to the 2019 protagonist battle. So this time, let's actually have a little bit of discussion. So, for all of you, I've listed all the books and all the protagonists. So let's go down the list and see... You know, pick a protagonist. Who are you going to support and give a nice little pitch for why? This is a little more official than our 2018 one. Oh, man. So pressure. Let's go at it. Because I was first for like years every time we ever had discussion <laughs> comments. Sorry. Sorry. Why don't you go first? <laughs> Who goes first? You, Stars. Oh, me. Uh, geez. Okay. Um, well, you know what? I was I was looking at the list of uh, of people. Um, a like not a lot of these protagonists are super likable, so this makes this decision like kind of difficult. <laughs> like for example, like Breck is like I even mentioned during our episode on Ancillary Justice, like Breck is pretty flat. Um, in Accelerando, like the Maxes are are ki kind of unlikable. Um, the the time traveler and the time machine is kind of a d bag. Um, 
I don't know. It's like it makes this whole thing like kind very, of? very difficult. Um, I'm gonna, you know, and you you list a fire upon the deep as the Olsen dots as the protagonist. Um, I actually yeah. re- remember Ravna and like Crazy Spaceman more than more than the Olsen dots. That that one's much more of a, you know, ensemble cast. So I just listed that just to kind of remind people of yeah. people in it. But yes, I was thinking like Ravna or who's God, who are the. What's the spaceman's name? Like the super awesome, uh, like revived spaceman. He's so great. He's gonna be my favorite, and I can't even remember what his name is. <laughs> <laughs> he was clearly Vince's favorite. I yeah. mean, yeah. All right, that guy. Right, so what I'm gonna have to go with with that guy. Fam Nguyen, that's right. Uh, Fam Nguyen, yes. Yeah, because yes. he's. I'm gonna have to go with him from uh, from Fire Upon the Deep. Do it. All right, John. Who do you pick? I know you have a little bit more limited. In terms of the books you read, but a little bit more limited selection. I've actually read some of the books on on the previous list, uh, mm-hmm. on the on the rest of the 2019 list. But uh, I still have to say, I think of the list that I've I've read, I think I'm going to have to choose Breck. Uh, as unle- unlikable as Breck was, I think um, <laughs> there was a there was a there was a uh, there was a very very focused sense of purpose. Uh, and I thought that that was a, a good good part of the book, so I'm gonna choose Breck. I like it. I like it. Adrian, uh, I have to go with Guy Montag because of the fact that he's the only one on this list that clearly likes books. Um, I'm pretty <laughs> sure everyone else in this list would burn a book if they had a chance. So Guy Montag. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good point. I mean, you can't argue with that. He does yep. like books, and this is a book club. <laughs> <laughs> now, now that Adrian has given his pandering answer, Vincent, ben, give us a real answer. <laughs> I, I have a, uh, I have a slightly tainted uh, opinion. Um, I actually really enjoyed The Wandering Earth. Now, I know that in the book there's no protagonist, but I also ended up watching the movie, which kind of made them inexplicably kind of tied together. And I felt like The Wandering Earth, both as a movie and as a book, was relatively compelling. Um, but I, I have to say that the world was more compelling than the idea of like a main character. But it felt like the main character in that book was actually the Earth, like the planet and like the journey it was taking. Um, if For those of you who don't remember, The Wandering Earth is basically the sun's going to blow up and the Earth has to move to another solar system. And like how the how the earth basically gets ubered to another solar system and it was just really interesting on not only in the book but also in the movie so i would actually say that the main character of the morning earth is not the unnamed child as charlie has listed it in our discussion points but it would i would say it's actually the earth itself and i actually really enjoyed what the earth was changed to and how it uh, developed uh, over the plot of the book and the movie nice i like it so i was going to go with Roy McBride, just because he is ludicrous in Ad Astra. <laughs> you know, not obviously for likable points, but just because it's like he fell off of an atmospheric antenna, had shrapnel go through his parachutes, and didn't even react, and that's just like the whole movie. And it's ridiculous. Wait, isn't that like Luke Skywalker who falls off of Cloud City? Didn't he fall basically off an atmospheric antenna? Yeah, I mean, imagine if Luke didn't have the Force, and he was just as calm and knew what was going on. Like, that's pretty much <laughs> Roy McBride for no reason besides the fact that he's awesome. But, you know what? I lied to you about there not being a bracket. There is a bracket between your four choices because nobody f- picked the same choice. So, to go first... <laughs> wow, this deception. I don't know how I feel about this. Inside. Uh, this is why I'm not the usual host. You can't trust anything I say. It might all be lies. It's true. Just like my lessons. Anyways. <laughs> Ouch. Brick Self-burn. versus the Earth. So... <laughs> We got Brick from Ancillary Justice, and then we just have the Earth as transformed into a planetary rocket ship. Uh, John, who who do you vote for in terms of Breck versus the Earth as most... It doesn't even matter how you qualify them. You're just voting for one over the other as protagonist for your favorite and for, by whatever criteria. I don't I don't need a reason, but Earth Earth is awesome, so I, I choose the Earth. F yeah, F yeah, baby. A vote for All Earth right, is a vote for humanity. I assume Vincent, you voting for Earth. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, without, without Earth, there would be a no Breck. Adrian, are we <laughs> okay? Are, is this just over right now, or are you voting? Uh, uh, no, I gotta vote for Breck because the Earth is doomed. So <laughs> true. <laughs> true. We got and then Stavros. Uh, you know, 
I, I have a hard time considering the Earth a character, so I have to go with Breck on this one. I can pay attention, man. <laughs> Stop no. Rose for plot reasons. <laughs> this means I have to come in as tiebreaker, and I feel like I need to end this horrible meme before it begins, so I'm voting for Breck. Hey! He's <laughs> clearly going to win. <laughs> But yes, I'm signing off. I'll, I'll talk to you guys later. <laughs> there's already <laughs> there's already salt hey, here. Hey, I stayed on even though John Carter got robbed last time. So <laughs> John Carter's the best. I don't know why he didn't John win. Carter's the best. Charlie, you, you should have just voted for John Carter on this vote, and it would have been a tie. <laughs> <laughs> I have standards and dignity and self respect. I can't be passed. Anyways, second part of the bracket. We got Guy Montag, puts out fires, memorizes books, escapes robot dogs, versus <laughs> Fan Nguyen, who survives ridiculous intergalactic threats from the Outer Rings or whatever it's called. I can't remember. The Outer Zones? <laughs> I don't... It's been since May. And also managed to laser a bunch of dog hybrid creature wolf things. Who is more epic? Uh, Adrian. <laughs> Okay, it's got to be Guy Montag. Found new one is basically like a you know like an AI's Tamagotchi. So I don't. Slightly <laughs> 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 unattended, undernurtured Tamagotchi. <laughs> Does that mean he's better? Like, <laughs> anyways, anyway, it's kind of like the Accelerando protagonists. Are they actually awesome, or are they just like babies riding in the carriage of AI? Anyways, I'm not sure if that analogy made sense, but uh, Vincent. Um, I have to say that my second choice behind the wandering was uh, Guy Montag because Ooh. he actually had a lot of like depth to his character in terms of how he changed over the course of the book and the the sheer amount of like um, mental pressure he had to overcome, like living his entire life as someone who was conformist and then breaking free of it and giving all of it up, even though his wife was kind of a bitch and there's pretty much nothing left for his life. So. <laughs> I don't know. When something like that happens, is your life's up for a change. I mean, it can only get better. So I think he did the right thing. Your wife just watched the television room all the time. That's a lot to go through. John, you have read neither of these books. How do you vote? <laughs> no, I'm sure he's read Fahrenheit. Actually, I have read Fahrenheit 451. Ooh. And don't based, on, my, don't based on that knowledge, I will say definitely the other character, not Guy Montag. <laughs> <laughs> guy is completely ineffectual and he's he's you could take him out of the story the the story would read the same he's completely <laughs> ineffectual to the entire world within he, which he resides and he does Without not him, deserve don't have to move on all he did but was if, he memorized king james bible and if you have him christianity <laughs> like could i put this way liking way, books is I not enough John votes the other way with no knowledge of the other candidate. It's just, <laughs> it's just negative politics at its finest. I, I'm going to try to convince John to change his vote because Jose and I did a project on Fahrenheit 451 in eighth grade where we repeatedly burned a cardboard house over and over again. <laughs> wow. <laughs> long jump for joy. <laughs> <laughs> you got to vote for that book now, all right? As entertaining as that is, eighth grade, I don't know anything about lead characters. Guy Montag is the worst. <laughs> so, Stavros, you going to end this now or are you going to lead to the tiebreaker? No, so let me make the case for not Guy Montag, because... <laughs> for fam. Yeah, for fam. Well, A, Guy Montag is the worst, because, I mean, you guys said his wife was kind of a bitch. I think he was basically a bitch. Because he's, you know, <laughs> he does... He, he just, he's just the worst. Like, he waffles for so long and, he, you know, he finally, like, he finally runs away at the end, and that's and that's the only reason why he's alive. <laughs> so I don't know. Whereas Fam, like, yeah, he's like kind of like ridden. He's kind of like a, a like a Tamagotchi for the transcendent power, but like he knows how to like operate like you know uh, you know robot suits of armor, and he like has the Gatling gun off the side of the ship at the end, and he's just this beast of a of a spaceman. So I don't know how you guys can vote for kind of the pansy little fire firefighter guy so just well, putting that jose, out there jose is pretty pissed off at you don't expect him to see your house when he catches on fire <laughs> just put that out there all right and as the tiebreaker yeah guy montag is basically just 1984 with a book that doesn't feel like murdering him horribly so i'm fighting for fun <laughs> <laughs> 
Fair. So, yeah. <laughs> Can't argue with that. All right. Time for the finale. Ironically, two AI-controlled puppets who probably don't even really <laughs> act as protagonists in their, home, in their own rights. We got exactly. Breck versus Fam. Adrian, which, you know, which motivationless puppet do you... <laughs> motivationless <I> puppet. <laughs> um, oh, man, that's hard because, I mean, Breck wins, essentially, right? And Fam kind of is sad for half of the book and then explodes and kills billions of people. Um, yeah, let's go with Fam. Why not? <laughs> nice. Yay. Just for Done. the sheer body count of his life. That, you know, <laughs> oh, wow. Thousands of years as an ancillary. Wow. Fam kills billions of people. <laughs> wow. Go fam. Would you have voted for Tarkin because he destroyed kind of Alderaan? Is that what? <laughs> also, he doesn't necessarily kill billions of people. Doesn't he just put them in the slow zone? Which effectively kills them, though, because everyone's oh, so dependent sure. on, you know, transcendent technology. True. True that. John, a competition between a character from a book you have read versus a book you haven't. <laughs> well, with, I, I've learned a lot over did. the course of this this <laughs> this recording. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna still I'm gonna still stick with Breck. I feel like she had or he, you know, depending on your interpretation of the book um i think that they were were trying to do something good they were trying to change things for the better to give people autonomy and freedom i'm for freedom so i'm, I'm with breck on this one we got breck stands for justice and freedom got it she yeah. is literally yeah. a justice <laughs> I read that book. so vincent um fam i i don't believe in the uh hierarchical um white uh power ownership of all sci-fi books you gotta vote for the minorities every once in a while get a little representation shake up the system fam is a great character i love him sure <laughs> true and stavros you know what like i it, it's i i hate voting against breck just because and i did like ancillary justice a lot but breck's character like i said before just didn't really i don't know just didn't really have that ha have what i wanted in a in a heroic main character so i have to go with fam go with fam Excellent. So that is three to one. Fam wins. There you go, fam. Fam. He is... No, you could do it. Our, our 2019. <laughs> you do it. Fam no one. We did it. We got through Technically. two oh, years worth of brackets in one episode. Another upset. <laughs> yes. So for our next topic, for our first anniversary episode, we had a little bit of confessions to make lazy book choices and i'll be honest last year for dune i had it just sitting on my shelf after i stole it from my parents pile of books they were going to give goodwill and so i suggested it but for this year 2019 is what we're talking about does anyone have lazy confessions to make that they just kind of picked the book because it was just kind of there or they just kind of picked it you know, I will say that uh, so our only movie we did this year at Astra, I, it may qualify as a lazy pick only because I was looking for a sci-fi movie for us to do, and it may have been like oh, one of the only ones because you know we wanted to release the episode close to the movie release time, um, and this is the only ones where like kind of schedule worked out enough for us to do that. So that may, that might qualify as a lazy pick. Sure, sure, because I know you wanted us to. I know I, you and I saw Annihilation when the movie came out, and like we tried to arrange some other stuff, it didn't work out, but we managed to make Ad Astra work this time. Oh, but nice. it seems like this year we got pretty consistently new topics or people bring up stuff they're interested in, hadn't known yet already. Does the Wandering Earth count because it's a short story? <laughs> it was it like could. 50 pages. Did we know that at yeah. the time when we picked it, though? We did I don't not think know, so. Actually, we picked yeah. it because it, it was so popular. And then we I realized, think... oh, it is a short story. Yeah, I think we got the book and we discussed, like, should we do a couple stories? And after we, like, read our 20 pages, we're just like, nah, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> not because we didn't like it, but just because we were lazy. So I will take that as laziest act of space podcast for the year. <laughs> All right, let's get to the the big topic everyone's waiting for. Your end, 
So we already talked about what was kind of your favorite world, but what would you just say is straight up your favorite book? Which one did you enjoy the most, regardless of like the setting or like specific characters or that sort of thing? So, Adrian, do you have a favorite like book you just straight up enjoyed the most? Hmm. It might be Fire Upon the Deep. I think that probably is most accurate. Like, the others were fun. Um, I took that one with me on my trip to Japan, and I just I kept reading it every spare chance I got. It was really fun. I like that one the best. Nice. Good. Stavros? Yeah, I, I hate to agree right off the bat, but, um, yeah, Fire Upon the Deep. Actually, you know, full disclosure, I had read this or listened to it before we started the podcast. Um so that, that could also qualify as a lazy pick, um, but I'm glad I got to work it in again. Um, I liked it a lot. Although, honestly, um, God, there are just so many good options. <laughs> like Mecha Samurai Empire was kind of like a more fun, uh, like maybe even pulpy pick. Um, even Accelerando has some interesting ideas. Um, but yeah, no, I have to go with Fire Upon the Deep for a favorite pick there. Vincent? For me, it had to be Mecha Samurai Empire. Um, it was, I have to say that partially it was influenced by the fact that we did get Peter Tarias to show up, but also because the prior year we had just been kind of like talking with him and Mecha Samurai Empire was just fun. It was like a really interesting book and um, just the idea that we could engage with the author and like we just got so much depth out of the conversation with him like about the world building like what was going through his head when he when he wrote the book about the characters um about the world building it was it was just overall very interesting to me i have to say that that was probably my favorite book and my favorite podcast to record the entire season um that being said of course you know fire upon the deep was a great book um i also felt that wandering earth was a great book slash movie just because it was so different compared to the rest of the sci-fi books that we have but uh, for me, Mecha Samurai Empire, just to uh, buck the trend. And also because it's my honest opinion. Nice. And John? Uh, I'm going to have to choose a fire upon the deep. It was it was uh, zero pages of turning. <laughs> it was, I feel like you uh, have to select a different one just because you did not read that one. <laughs> no, no, Jesus. No, no. He literally, you can't, he literally you can get away with that it. for character bracket. You can't he get said, away with it for actual <laughs> character bracket. He said he didn't pay, turn a single page. Oh, you guys are the worst. Man, all right, all right, all right, all right. I, I will choose Excel Rondo. I thought Excel Rondo had, wow, like, that's as a pressure as, right there. <laughs> <laughs> from a tech standpoint, you know, it was it was you know uh, layers and layers and layers of detail about how, um, how how advanced technologies would develop, and I love that stuff. I love getting into the details. So, um, yeah, I really I really enjoyed that book. I hated the characters, enjoyed the book. So. Yeah, so, like yeah. I'm. Th- this year, I agree with uh, Star Wars. There's just a ton of good books we read, and even like I even really I know that people complained about our episode. I even really liked Red Rising a lot, despite it not being like in my favorite genre or whatever. But uh, I have to go with Fire Upon the Deep myself. Saw Rondo. I think in terms of the kind of way it, I think about things after the book, I thought was super cool and super interesting. But Fire Upon the Deep is just like that right combination of like galactic wide stuff, interesting concepts in terms of civilization and the science. I know that I went on and on about how much I loved all the time stuff on the planet. I thought that was super cool as kind of a like a alternate evolutionary path for intelligence. So I have to go with that for many, many reasons. Just enough scrolls. Just <laughs> enough scrolls. We may be talking about those in a bit. But fortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, it is time for our protagonist battle victor show off in the epic protagonist battle finale across the years. What? So 2017 champion was William Mandela for Forever War. He was a soldier, a physicist who managed to survive millennia through relativistic time travel, only to make it out of what ended up being a pointless war and countless you know, I guess millennia, I will say again, of progress by the human race, despite him being gone. We have Mark Watney, who managed to survive on Mars despite being abandoned there, you know, through ingenuity and engineering. And we have Fam Nguyen, 
who is just the coolest guy in what was many of our favorite books this year. He may have been a puppet for what is essentially a tech god from the outer reaches of the galaxy. But he was totally rad, despite some unfortunate anti scrode writer racism towards the <laughs> middle of the book. <laughs> it's but. true. <laughs> All right. Stavros, do you have an argument for one of these? Uh, this is a favorite character, right? Oh, it's, it's, again, there's like no actual qualifications. It's just whichever <laughs> one you whichever want to put like forward as should win the competition <laughs> in terms of like epicness or you find likable or whatever. You know, it's funny because uh, Mandela from Forever War and Fam Nguyen are kind of awesome for similar reasons because they're both awesome, like awesome space power suit uh, wearers and implementers. Um Mark Watney, I think, is he's he's smart and stuff, but I he he doesn't kind of make the same splash as the other guys for me. Uh, I may have to go with Fam Nguyen again on this one, although it's close. I I want to like Mandela too, because uh, he is pretty good, and uh, you know, especially for the time with the book. God, really tough call, but I think I might have to go with Fam Nguyen on this one. Nice saving the galaxy despite putting a bunch of people in the slow zone. Yeah, take that, people that are slow now. Hey, it could have been everyone was dead. <laughs> That's true. He made he made the tough call when no one else had the balls. When Ravna was like, yeah. "Don't do it, Fam Nguyen, no," and he's like, "No, I got to do it. I'm the hero of this book." Is that how, the, is that how your That's audio uh, podcast went? <laughs> yes. I, I, I feel like I need to. It like. I need to make my own rendition now. Where Ravna sounds like that, and Fam Nguyen sounds amazing. Wow, you're you're upsetting female viewers. <laughs> <laughs> my God! You I stand really by my it. horrible statements. My God. I apologize on behalf of the of <laughs> this is women who are complex like and express- deep. You do not sound like Stavros. <laughs> it's this true. is why we don't let you express your opinions regularly, Stavros. This is, yeah, this is this is why I host and don't actually talk most of the time because otherwise <laughs> these opinions would just be horrible. Don't worry, I make up for that, as well as the rest of us. John, <laughs> oh. among the two that you have read and one that you have not, who do you put forward as epic champion of the most important battle ever known across the universe of mankind? It's gotta be Watney. Watney's, Watney's smart. Watney's got, got, got guts. Uh, it's definitely Watney. He's relatable. You know, he's a farmer. What's, what's more American than that? It's true. He is, he is American. I'll give you that. That's like saying I'm a farmer, John, because I'm a biologist. I'll take it, though. So, Vincent? Um, actually, this actually only goes to show how similar John and I am, because I was going <laughs> for Jason Bourne. Um, and it was primarily because it's such a, it's such a genre-breaking story. Like Most sci-fi books deal with a protagonist who is a hero fighting against aliens or bad guys or some sort and this was like a hero fighting against environment and like the literal challenges of like you know macgyvering and staying alive on an extremely hostile environment um and basically every kind of problem he ran into was man i'm actually very curious how he will solve this problem with science as opposed to brute force lasers guns or armor like it was it, it felt like you had to be very creative and and you knew that every problem that came up, there were like 5 million nerds out there who were just like waiting to jump on you. Be like, no, the specific heat of ice is not that low. It is definitely <laughs> something different. And he, he totally not happened that way. Like he did his research and I feel like uh, he deserves a lot of uh, credit for it. So Jason Bourne all the way. Jason Bourne on Mars. <laughs> Jason Bourne on Mars. And thank you, John, for affirming the fact that you and I almost have the same opinion on just about everything in life. Yes. <laughs> I don't know why, but we get along. Damn Adrian, Adrian, you gonna end this now, or are you gonna bring up another challenger and leave this up to me? Yeah, choose <laughs> someone not from the list. That's um, the list. I think I'm gonna go with Fam, just partly because of you know representativeness and because he is the most seductive Tamagotchi ever. So seductive. <laughs> oh, that is that's true. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Adrian leaning uh, ways I never expected him to lean. <laughs> I mean, now that physics professor is out of the running, might as well go with Epic Space Fair Space Tamagotchi. So I guess I'm putting my vote down for fam. I didn't realize he was such like a protagonist, like, you know, leader when I read the book. 
hey, we liked him a bunch. It's fine. It's, <laughs> you know, again, the rules are very loose, loose as I said. Yeah. I don't know. After hearing Star Wars' female voice, I was like, I'm not voting for that female protagonist. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, yes, Ravna did not even make the initial list for the initial competition. But I guess our winner is Fam. Next yeah, year, yeah, we may have him. a challenger to de-seat him. But after his epic flying around and shooting tree creatures on mechanical skateboards or whatever those are supposed to be and dog hybrids and whatnot and sacrificing himself to save the galaxy only to kill you know a small fraction of it but yeah we're going with him you know who would have beat fam john carter yes i know <laughs> but he didn't win in 2017 he did not deserve know. that win charlie I'm just this... angry at, at this podcast 2017. I, <laughs> I, I am disappointed in 2017 John... podcast. We know that John Carter is the winner of Space Podcast 1917, so we can <laughs> keep keep that in our hearts, right? It's in mine. And last topic. To wrap this up, what has been the best meme of Space Podcast? Because right now my nominees are The Spice versus Scrooge. Nobody has it. Wait, what? Wait, what? What? That crazy was really interesting. <laughs> you know, Wait, a meme has to have a picture and a in a punchline, right? No, it's just like a social meme where it's like hilarious things get brought up, like with no context, just because it's a meme. I thought our meme would just spay. <laughs> oh, that could. I mean, now that you bring it up. Is that our thing? Space, I, mean, I thought the debate like, was between space good. and is Charlie okay? Like, I oh, thought those were our memes. No, not is Charlie okay. That just makes everyone sad. <laughs> <laughs> is that okay? Is that more acceptable? Yes. Um, I'm fine with it. <laughs> yes. Anything that gets well. the name Stavros in a meme, I if you get that to catch on. A oh, don't guys. say that. <laughs> Star Wars is okay. He's our fearless leader. <laughs> Wait I until some horribly racist meme comes out with Star Wars on it. Oh, oh man! I mean, it's I've already have I already have the ammo for the really sexist one in this episode. So, <laughs> what's the worst oh. that could happen? Making so terrible worse. imitations isn't the worst thing. <laughs> Someone's Why would you challenge this up a internet? decade from now and then Stavros will lose everything? <laughs> <laughs> then we will ask if Stavros is okay. That's true. I give that meme six out of ten screws. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's solid. I like this I like the screwed rating system. Maybe we can just implement that, make that a future segment. Oh, I was going to, but I think the first episode I thought of doing it was Mecha Samurai Empire, and I didn't want to be like, hey, Peter, screwed memes. Like, <laughs> oh. it should be totally nonsense. Should it that, be I mean, nonsense? that's a show, so. Like, nonsense. is there some other way to, like, qualitatively measure screws besides number? Number of screws? <laughs> I don't know. Is there, like, effectiveness Size? of screws? Isn't there like so sophistication also, levels? There's like simple scrods and then advanced scrods in the book. Also, now that we've read more books, is half the technology in Accelerando just fancier scrods? Okay, well, before next season, I need to read this book of Fire Upon the <laughs> It's a requirement to keep up with podcasts. Like, you're, reading, you're reading three months, so might as well read this one. I know, yeah. Work it in to your schedule. You it's good, it, man. Three out of four recommended as their favorite book for the year. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. All right. Anyone else have anything to bring up? Or does it seem like we have had a jolly fun time reminiscing about the year? I mean, we had a time. <laughs> <laughs> there was well, no jolly or fun. Wow. We <laughs> had Are you time. okay? <laughs> <laughs> Star was okay. I like this new meme. It's better than Charlie's. Charlie. Is Tharos okay? So what happened, Charlie? When you host, the the meme goes to someone else. I know. It's like it's some kind of transference great. thing happening. Yeah, but this was Transitive a lot of pro- property of uh, mathematics. <laughs> I'm perfectly happy with letting Stavros do all the work again next time. Though he is still going to be editing and making sure we don't sound like garbage and 
editing out any of my squeaky chair sounds, though. I've Thank got you. Spartan switch <laughs> chairs before episodes. You know what? Your, your, your chair has been, has been behaving pretty well. And, you know, for all these other people out there, if you find any Charlie's chair squeaking, just blame Charlie. Yeah, just, put it, just put it in the comments and <laughs> ask, is Charlie okay? Yeah, it'll be a, it'll be a, a relevant question. So, Star Wars, anything exciting we can look forward to next year? Well, you know what? No. We're gonna have we're gonna have books that we're gonna read, and then we're gonna talk about them. Uh, and we're hopefully gonna have more authors on the show. Honestly, so uh, I nice. think there would be a lot of fun times ahead. Excellent. Well, I figured that's a good place to wrap up. So, so, so if you, the listener, so you have any listen. suggestions about uh, what we should read or authors <laughs> we should talk to, please send it to us at spac podcast at podcast dot twitter dot myspace dot com and I will look up see you next time. yeah can you look us up on myspace that'd be good and yeah, if you, you are an Star author at one eight hundred not a real number so. <laughs> oh god stop this is going well number. yeah <laughs> Anyways, last time we did the anniversary episode, we gave Cyrus a big thanks for, you know, putting this all together and everything. So we don't have to do this this year. So unless anyone has anything else to say. Uh, like thank you, Stavros, for doing everything <laughs> and everything for this podcast. Yeah. Thank people that listen, all six of them. Yeah. I know most thanks, of you mom. know us personally. I love you, Mom. Yeah. Also, my mom and my sister and my brother in laws, like, you can all screw yourselves because none of you listen to this, even though I said, hey, why don't you listen to it on that eight hour flight? And you're just like, no. <laughs> so, no thanks to Charlie's family. And no thanks. Thank to you to Zahra. <laughs> I'm glad we straightened that out. So, on that note, we look forward to reading more books and seeing you all next year. Say goodbye, everybody. Bye, everybody. I did it this time. See ya. Aha. Yay! <laughs> See you in 2020. <laughs>